Hi, I'm Fatma and I'm going to present Cloak, which is a method for discovering essential features for protecting prediction privacy. This is a joint work with Kazem Taram, Ali Jalali, Ahmed Athakeb, Dean Tolson, and Hadi Esmaizade. Privacy is a huge concern in our personal lives. There are lots of devices that are constantly listening to us and collecting our information and are then sending them to these remote machine learning service providers where they are processed. So it's important to provide mechanisms in which data is handled appropriately and the privacy of the users is protected. The particular privacy related problem that we are trying to tackle in this work is one where a user is sending a query to a deployed uh, machine learning model on a remote server and they're asking a question like, is this person smiling? So they're sending this image, they're asking their question and they expect a response from the deployed model. Now the privacy problems here are uh, one, an adversary who can intercept this connection and try to infer information about the query or an adversary who has access to the actual uh, machine learning service provider, they have access to our query and can try to infer uh, other attributes such as the person's hair color, their whereabouts, or you know if they're wearing glasses or other types of uh, information that we might want to keep personal. To address this problem, we propose Cloak, which is a method that finds the features that the deployed uh, machine learning model uses to make its decisions and then it discards of the rest of the unrelated or uh, non-essential features. Now for the smile detection task, uh, when we apply Cloak, you can see that the lip area, which is related to the smile, is kind of visible, but the rest of the features are all discarded. So if you feed this to a model which is supposed to make a decision on smile detection, it can successfully give you uh, the correct decision. But in uh, other models that try to detect eyeglasses or the hair color uh, of this person, they fail. Prior approaches that address this problem mainly rely on cryptographic methods like homomorphic encryption and secure multi-party computation. However, these solutions incur huge overheads in terms of computation and communication and cause uh, the overall execution time of one round of inference to be in the order of seconds or tens of seconds. This is not suitable for real-time applications which have service level agreements in the order of milliseconds. Cloak, however, does not have um, huge overheads. It has very negligible overhead, uh, which allows it to keep the execution time in the order of milliseconds. Also, cryptographic methods need cooperation from the ML service providers to build the infrastructure needed to apply them and deploy them. Um, Whereas Cloak can actually be deployed uh, by the users themselves, so they don't need the service provider to cooperate with them, which makes it easier uh, for users to use it and uh, it's easier to deploy. Now let's see uh, how Cloak actually finds the features that are essential for a deployed machine learning model to make a certain decision. So if we take the example of this image and the question of if this person is smiling, and apply uh, a small patch on this person's mouth. So we're suppressing the pixels that are there and we're asking our question, uh, th is this person smiling? The response that we're going to get from the machine learning model is going to have a low accuracy. It's not going to be an accurate response. Therefore, uh, this feature, the features that are there, the pixels were important features. Now, if we apply another patch, if we suppress the pixels that are in this person's forehead, and we ask our question again, this time we're gonna get an accurate response, which means that the features we removed were uh, probably irrelevant. So Cloak builds on this uh, intuition that if you suppress important features, then you're going to lose a lot of accuracy, but if you suppress less important ones, then you're not going to lose accuracy. The way that Cloak uh, finds these essential features uh, is more principled than just applying patches and measuring accuracy. So to put it more concretely, Cloak takes an input image uh, where each pixel is considered a feature. Cloak also has two trainable sets of parameters, two matrices um, that have the same size as the image. And one of them learns the standard deviation of the noise, um, sigma, and the other one learns the mean. Uh, mean. Now, after some iterations of the training, uh, these matrices would look like what you see here, where uh, they, uh, the standard deviation value uh, would be high for pixels that are less related. So the margin pixels have a high standard deviation here, 
but the more important pixels like the ones around the mouth they have uh, they are smaller in magnitude uh, and then we sample from this noise and apply it to our image now in reality uh, it, uh, we don't just uh, apply some noise or some um, you know white patch uh, pixels uh, where the features are supposed to be suppressed what we do is we apply these constant values that uh, we've trained and the suppressed image looks something like this so you can see the area where the mouth is but the rest of the features are suppressed now uh, let's get to the loss function so our loss function has two main terms uh, one is the cross entropy loss which is uh, there to minimize the classification error so all this does is that makes sh it makes sure that the accuracy doesn't drop too much we also have a privacy term, uh, which is the term that maximizes the standard deviation of noise. So it's basically summing up um, the variance of the noise and trying to increase them. And we also have this little uh, knob, lambda. So lambda lets us control uh, the uh, ac privacy accuracy trade-off. So if we increase it, we can have a higher accuracy. And if we decrease it, then we can have more privacy. Now let's put everything um, that we just saw together and see how, how our noise training algorithm actually works. So the input to our algorithm is a labeled data set um, that has the labels for the main task that you're trying to have high utility for. And you'll also need Lambda, which is the knob that we use um, to uh, provide this trade-off between utility and privacy. We initialize our, um, tens uh, our parameters mu and rho. So we initialize mu to 0 and rho to minus 10. It could be like any arbitrary negative number so that uh, once we fit it to the tanh and we apply the uh, bias, it becomes uh, near 0. We also have a parameter m, which is kind of a cap on how much we want the noise to grow. So there is also a hyperparameter which is tuned and we set it to any arbitrary positive number. Uh, now the training group, um, within the loop, uh, we select a training batch X uh, from the data set D. We then sample our uh, noise tensor E. Uh, we calculate sigma uh, using rho and uh, M. And then we scale, um, we scale the noise and add uh, mu so we get our noise tensor and uh, we apply it to the image. And then we take a gradient step on mu and rho. So what is really important here is that our trainable parameters are only um, the standard deviation or its surrogate rho and mu. So we are not changing the deployed neural network. And that's really important here. Uh, and that it's why we don't really need cooperation from the uh, service provider. We don't need them to change their model we're just figuring out what the mo what their model uses um, and what features are more important. And once the algorithm has converged, um, the output that we get are uh, the mu and standard deviation tensors. And the most important thing here for us is the standard deviation tensor because it's kind of like an importance map. So wherever it has a higher value, um, that feature is less important. And where it has a lower value, we have more important, important features. So what we mostly care about is the standard deviation tensor, which tells us what features to keep and what features we need to lose. Talking about losing features, um, there are three ways that we can suppress uh, the non-essential features that you want to remove. One of them is to replace them with zero. The other one is to replace them with high standard deviation noise. So every time we sample uh, noise from a distribution with high standard deviation, and the last one is uh, the method that we propose, which is to suppress them with some trained values, with some trained constant values that we learn after we learn the noise. And uh, as you can see in this graph, uh, suppressing them uh, with some trained values gives you the highest accuracy and replacing them with zeros is actually um, the worst in terms of accuracy because it turns the image into uh, something that is out of the distribution for the deployed model. So it does not know how to classify it because it's not used to seeing images that have like these huge um, white patches in them. Therefore, uh, we have used um, the suppression method that uh, we propose, which just learns constant values to suppress with, and um, that's what we use in the experiment section.
Moving on to the experimental setup, um, we have used four sets of data sets, MNIST, UTK Face, Sci400, and Stella Bay, and four DNNs, Lanet, VGG16, AlexNet, and ResNet18, to evaluate quilt. And we have also used a server with 12 gigabytes of memory, a Titan XP GPU, and we've also used PyTorch to run our uh, machine learning models. First, uh, let's have a look at the qualitative results. So uh, here you can see the features that Cloak has found important uh, for this image, for the three tasks of hair color detection, glasses detection, and smile detection. Now, if we push um, Cloak further uh, to only select fewer um, features for each of these tasks, it can um, decrease the accuracy only a little and give us a fewer number of pixels that we need to keep. Now, if we apply uh, the suppression uh, technique here and suppress those uh, unimportant features, what we end up with are these uh, representations that you can see. So for the hair, you're only seeing the top of the person's head. For the glasses, you're seeing the eyes, a little of the nose, and for the smile, you're only seeing the uh, mouth. Now, uh, here we can see the privacy accuracy trade-off graphs for MNIST and UTK face datasets, uh, where privacy is uh, measured with the percentage of mutual information removed. We can see that in both cases, Cloak performs much better than a random Gaussian perturbation baseline. Also, we see that we can remove at least 85% of each image with losing only 1.42% uh, in utility. Now we look at a more practical experiment in which we have mounted some attacks. In these attacks, an adversary tries to infer attributes other than smile from cloak representations. Here the main task is a smile detection, so cloak tries to generate representations that allow that task to have high utility, but hide other attributes. The x-axis uh, shows the accuracy of the main task and y-axis shows the accuracy of uh, adversary on other tasks. Uh, and each dot in the graph shows cloak applied with different uh, levels of suppression. We can see that using cloaks uh, with representations that are suppressed, uh, that have 95.6% suppression ratio, uh, we, uh, the adversary becomes uh, enabled to infer uh, the, at uh, the sensitive attributes it was trying to attack and its classifier uh, becomes almost random. So it has an accuracy of near 50%. This shows that uh, an adversary cannot uh, infer sensitive information uh, when it has access to cloaked representations. In this slide, we want to look at how well cloak can perform under black box access mode, which means a setup uh, where the service provider is uncooperative and is not willing to provide access to their model for the purpose of applying cloak. Um, to tackle this issue, we have used a surrogate model, uh, which is a model with a different architecture but trained for the same task. We then apply Cloak on this uh, surrogate model and we can see that uh, using this scheme uh, with the black box uh, access, the performance of Cloak is only slightly degraded. So for the two tasks of smile detection and hair color detection, you can see that the orange line, which is the black box uh, mode, has um, only small negligible difference uh, with the blue one, which is the white box access mode. Finally, uh, we will see the effect of cloak on the fairness of the classifier in terms of gender. Uh, we are looking at two fairness metrics here, demographic, uh, demographic parity and equality of opportunity. And we can see that since cloak is removing uh, some of the features that might be biasing the classifier, uh, it is also improving these two metrics while incurring only little loss to the accuracy of the main task. Now, uh, to provide a short summary, uh, we saw that with the prevalence of machine learning as a service, uh, the privacy of queries that are sent to serv uh, these service providers is becoming a major concern. And uh, to address this, we propose Cloak, uh, which is a noise training based method for finding essential f uh, input features for the deployed uh, machine learning model and suppressing the rest of the features to protect the privacy of the input queries. Thank you so much for listening to my talk and uh, please feel free to reach me on my email with your questions. Thank you so much.